Hi, hello everyone, and welcome to this new video tutorial for Maverick Render. This time we will cover displacement, which is now a material property, and no longer an object property, since the most recent release. We have turned displacement into a material property for the sake of comfort, in response to the feedback given by many of our users. If we select a material we will see that there is a new roll-up labeled displacement. Let's see how it works. Let's create a new material ambience. And now we will drop any map that we like on the ball. For this example we will use a pattern from the library. When a map is dropped on an object, Maverick prompts the user to choose which plug to connect the map. Let's select displacement. And that's pretty much it. We can tile this map with its X form, like any other map. Keep in mind that some changes like this one require that you update displacement from the top toolbar for the geometry to catch up. If we go back to the displacement rollup in the material, we will see how it got auto enabled on connect. We can change its height from here. By pressing the displacement input plug we will get to the displacement node attributes where we can find strength and auto bump. As a reminder, let's see what the adaptive checkbox does. Let's pull up a view panel and enable the wireframe option to better understand the tessellation level of our objects. As you can see, enabling adaptive drastically reduces the total poly count by economizing triangles in the flatter areas of the map. One of the highlights in our new material based displacement system is that displacement automatically inherits the UV mapping configuration of the material. You can experiment by trying some of the options available not forgetting to update displacement when needed. You can still use the Convert to UV Map Modifier button to detach the UV mapping attributes to a separate modifier so you can edit the UVs for a particular object. Another new functionality requested frequently by our users is the ability to combine displacement with auto bump and bump normal mapping. Now both features simply work together if both are enabled. Let's just drop a new map and choose to connect as bump normal map. As you can see, bump is added on top of displacement. This allows for better fine detail control without affecting the geometry. By clicking on the new list of nodes that you see on top of the material editor you can easily navigate through the material connections. For example, let's get to the bump map to change its intensity. Let's take a look at how our material importers deal with displacement now. Let's click the substance designer button to create a new material scene. From this dialog we can enable and pre-configure displacement. Imported in the scene. And configurable from the material. One last thing worth mentioning is that we have changed the default settings for subdivision and displacement. The default setting is per pixel subdivision instead of per world units like before. This works best in most scenes as it is a scale independent measure. We recommend values between half a pixel and one pixel for final quality renders. Let's review our culling options real quick. Cullback side disables subdivision for the parts of your objects that backface the camera. Cull hidden disables subdivision for objects that fall outside the field of view. Let's try our universal PBR material importer now. Let's bring a material by selecting any one of its textures. Let's choose substance as the source, and auto as the material model. As we can see, all textures are pulled and their target plugs are detected automatically. Let's enable and pre-configure displacement and accept. In the materials panel we will find the material we just imported. We may render its thumbnail for visual identification. And then we may drop it on the scene. Let's update displacement and there you go.
If we inspect the material in the nodal editor we will see how displacement as a material property leads to simpler material graphs than in the past. Also, now it is possible to save and transport materials carrying their own displacement, unlike before. If we choose to use the nodal editor to build our materials, all we need to do is drop a height map and connect it to the displacement input plug in the material. This will automatically create the intermediate displacement node where you can configure strength and auto bump. Let's take a look at the two new per object modifiers that have been added in our newest release. The disp modifier allows to configure displacement per object, similarly to previous versions. This comes handy if for example one object requires a different displacement height than the rest. The new subdiv displacement allows to configure the subdivision refinement level per object. As we have just explored, having displacement available as a material property provides a leaner, more coherent workflow. This is all for now. See you in the next video. Have fun rendering with Maverick.